Good afternoon, Ms. Fobear. Thank you for um, taking the time to speak to me about UNC's central compliance. Um, I'm happy to have you. So can you start off by describing your role within institutional integrity and risk management? Sure. So I'm the chief compliance officer um, and heading up the central compliance unit, which is a part of institutional integrity and risk management. Um, and in that capacity, I partner with my colleagues in IIRM or IRM as we call it, as well as individuals across campus that have compliance related responsibilities. Awesome. Um, how has COVID-19 affected your role in central compliance at UNC? So that's an interesting question. So the central compliance role was established just this past November of 2020. So we've only ever existed within COVID. So I don't really know how it would have changed kind of outside of COVID. But I do think that COVID has highlighted the need for coordination and communication across campus on issues that have pan-university impact as we've faced with the COVID-19 epidemic. And a central tenant of the compliance program is going to be to foster open communication and collaboration across units. So I think in that regard, kind of what we've learned from COVID will help kind of as the compliance program continues to develop. Mm. So what relating to compliance at UNC most concerns you right now? And are there any concerns that are not related to COVID-19? Well, there are definitely concerns not related to COVID-19. I think we are seeing a drastic increase in external regulatory requirements as an institution of higher education. It seems like almost daily, the federal government is putting forth a new law that the university has to comply with. And so in that regard, you know, a lot of being asked of university officials who otherwise they're very busy in their day-to-day -day professional lives. And then you overlay COVID on top of that. And I think it's been a really challenging time for employees and students across the university to kind of balance um, stressors caused by COVID as well as increased uh, federal and state oversight and associated laws that we as an institution need to develop a plan to comply with. Hmm. So going off of that, are there any campus policies that you think students or faculty should be aware of regarding ERM and um, compliance? So ERM is made up of multiple offices that have policies that could touch on students depending on the role that students play at the university. So, you know, ERM includes export control, which I know you spoke to already. We have the privacy function, conflict of interest, and environmental health and safety, which is, has really broad campus responsibilities. So if students are engaged in research activities or otherwise gaining access to sensitive information, then there are definitely ERM related policies that would apply. But our our unit is only a little over a year old. So I think more is to come on kind of developments and activities coming out of ERM that will be of specific and particular interest to students. If there, if you could change any one policy at UNC, which one would you change and why? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. I don't know that I have a policy that I would look to change. I do think that we, could do a better job of how we communicate our policies and how we educate our campus mm. on our policies and in particular the why behind the policies because I think it's really important to understand why a policy is in place and then that fosters the ability of individuals to ask questions and understand and therefore leads to further compliance. I do think that um, I'm really excited about the statement of ethics survey that institutional integrity and risk management rolled out last week. I think that's the first initiative among a number of initiatives that will come out of ERM. Whether those will create policies in the end, I think is still unknown, but um, that 
ethics survey is really going to allow us to kind of seek to understand what the campus is looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it will drive other initiatives out of institutional integrity and risk management and the compliance program. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because um, Mr. Kemp said had a similar answer to you uh, when I interviewed him back in January. And also, for those wondering where you could find this ethics poll, it will be available in our newsletter, which is um, which this YouTube video will be included in. Right. So lastly, where should students and faculty go if they have more questions about compliance or ERM and what resources are available? Sure, well, the central compliance page of the ERM website will be live soon, probably by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. So that's where um, individuals can go to find out more about the compliance program, some initiatives that we're going to put into place related to certain compliance committees, as well as additional external and internal resources. So that would probably be the best location. Awesome, well, thank you so much. And if um, the newsletter comes out after uh, that page opens up, we'll make sure to link that in our newsletter. So thank right. you so much for your time, Ms. Fobert. Yeah, thank you.